Well, greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And welcome this morning on this Wednesday morning to uh, another edition of Brian's Bible Break as we continue our journey through Psalm 121. And uh, this morning we'll be reading verses 3 and 4 and reading from the English Standard Version. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence this day, Lord, as we uh, pause to listen to your word, to reflect on it, to be encouraged by it, to hear your still small voice speaking to us. Lord, we are grateful that we can come to you. We are grateful that you are our help. And it is you that we seek this day, Lord. So God, quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ. That as we reflect on your word, we will hear your still small voice speaking to us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all the blessings that you shower upon us. For your son, Jesus Christ. And for your promised helper, Holy Spirit. Lord, guide us and uphold us in your love and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. So Psalm 121, reading verses 3 and 4. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. This psalm of a sense, the saw a psalm that would have been sung by the people as they we're on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, possibly for one of the festivals, is one that, that encourages us and grants us the assurance that God is our helper. He is our ever-present help in times of difficulty, times of trouble. And so we read in verse 3, He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Other translations say that he will not let, your, let you stumble. And, you know, I think that's that sense that when we are walking with the Lord, he guides our steps, he directs our steps, he helps us from stumbling and falling. Isaiah talks about, about God making the rough places smooth and making the, the road flat and level for those who walk on it, who are walking in the way, walking with the Lord. And so it's that sense that, that when we're walking with the Lord, He protects us, He helps us, He leads us along the way. And so then the obvious question is, well, pastor, that's all well and good, but then how come God let me fall? How come God allowed me to stumble and fall and break my, my leg or break my ankle or, or, or cause injury to myself? And that's a, that's a legitimate question for which we, we really don't have a satisfactory answer and and you've heard me quote this verse on many occasions and it is true Paul writes in 1st Corinthians 13 verse 12 now we see dimly as in a mirror then we will see fully that is when we reach glory when we reach life eternal in God's glorious kingdom in the kingdom of heaven we will see fully now we know in part, then we will know fully, even as we are fully known. So the, the truth of that, of that statement of Paul's is that we don't understand the full um, extent of why things happen the way they do. But putting our trust and our hope and our faith in God means that, that we trust Him in all circumstances. 
it doesn't mean that that things won't happen that cause us harm, cause us difficulty. But when we're walking with the Lord, those possibilities are far less likely to happen than if we are living with reckless abandon, just doing whatever pleases us, doing whatever we uh, want to do. <clears throat> and so we trust and we believe in God's Word. that he will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. And what a beautiful thought that is, friends. That the God of all creation, the God who watches over us, the God who is our helper, the God who abides in us, doesn't nap. He doesn't take a break. He doesn't slumber. He is omnipresent, meaning he is always present and always alert and willing to act and willing to respond when we cry out to him for help. God doesn't hang a sign on the door saying, gone fishing, back in two hours. God doesn't say, I'm on vacation this week, so if you need my help, you'll have to wait. He is always present, always ready to help when we cry out to Him. He never slumbers. Behold, He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. That is, He who keeps His people under the shadow of his wings. He will neither slumber nor sleep. So take comfort in that truth, friends, that we have ready access to Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit 24-7. It doesn't matter whether it's the middle of the day or the middle of the night, when we cry out to God, He hears us. And He listens to us. And He searches our hearts and knows our needs and knows the meditations of our hearts in a most intimate way, 24-7. And so we can cling to that hope, friends. We can indeed place our faith and our trust in Almighty God in that hope. And the good news for the believer, for those who are in Christ, is that Christ died on the cross in order for us to have that intimate relationship with God. He sacrificed His life for you and for me so that we could commune with God. So that we could be present with him. And even now as we are spending time in his word. We are present with him. And he speaks into our heart a word of encouragement and hope for this day. And so friends no matter what you're facing this day. No matter what you're your trials or your concerns or your challenges are this day. Know that the Lord is present and willing and able to help in whatever way is needed if you will just ask Him. Because our God does not sleep, He does not slumber, He does not take a break, He does not abandon us or, nor for, forsake us. He is ever present. In, in the midst of life to help us, to grant us wisdom and courage to face this day. And so friends, take comfort in that hope. Take comfort in that truth. Take comfort in 
his promise revealed to us in his word. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word which encourages us. We thank you for your promises which are revealed to us in your holy scriptures. Father, we're grateful that you are ever present, that you don't sleep, you don't slumber, you don't take a break, you don't take a vacation, you don't abandon or forsake us, but that you are ready whenever we call on you. Jesus, we thank you that you are willing to give your life as a ransom for ours so that we could have an intimate relationship with your Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you abide in us and live through us, revealing to us the wisdom of God, the wisdom from above, and that you direct our steps. And so, God, we worship you. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you and we adore you. Jesus, we thank you and we praise you and we worship you. Holy Spirit, we thank you and we need you and we seek you this day. And so, God, guide us and uphold us in your love and your grace as we seek to walk humbly with you, as we seek your face this day. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that you've been encouraged by it. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack the next couple of verses from Psalm 121. Have a blessed day, friends. Go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.